Hi, welcome into my studio and today I want to cover a topic that uh, lots of people still get very confused and concerned about. It's glazing for oil painting. Now I've covered it quite in depth in a couple of other videos so I'm not going to duplicate that content but I just want to basically show beginners and novices what glazing is all about, how simple it can actually be. Okay, so what's the basics? So on screen now you can see uh, a screenshot from one of my other glazing videos. And basically I've drawn two black lines you can see horizontally on there. Now glazing is putting a transparent or semi-transparent layer over the top of a, an already dried under layer. Now, not all colors are semi-transparent or transparent. Lots of them are not and some are, such as ultramarine blue. You can see the, the blue on that um, photo. You can see the black straight through it, so it's not covering anything up. All the way to the right then, for, for something that's very opaque, is the white, and you can see that's pretty much covering up the black stripes completely. So when we're glazing, we generally, generally wouldn't thin the paint a lot with something like odorless paint thinners because when you're thinning a paint down say you're using something that's slightly opaque and you want to use it as a glaze or you want to thin that paint down to glaze you're going to weaken the the way the paint actually adheres to the surface now that's why we use a glazing medium instead so if you did thin the paint with uh, thinners and paint it on top of a dried underpainting, it could potentially start to peel off. So there's lots of different glazing mediums out there. Um, because I use Alkid paints myself, so they dry uh, pretty much by the next day, ready for another layer, I also use Alkid based mediums. And I personally use M. Graham Walnut Alkid Medium. That's the one I've been using for quite a few years. And before that, I was always using Liquin Original. So either of those, I find, do the job perfectly well. They don't slow the drying of the paints down either. So once again, they dry by the next day. So that's nice and simple. Don't need lots and lots of different types of mediums. So let's take a look at an example. Um, this is from my Tiger oil painting tutorial. And basically, I've put some of the medium onto the glass palette that you can see on the left hand side of the picture and I'm bringing in some colors. Now if you use quite a bit of medium then even you know semi opaque colors or opaque colors will start to become more transparent and you can see I've made up a, a warm orange brown mix just put some more medium in there again you don't need to use that much and the good thing about it as well when you're adding it rather than a thinner's it doesn't make the paint all drippy and it's not going to start running down the paint surface. So you can see all I'm doing is using just a small amount of that glaze that I've made up. I'm adjusting the colors now just to make it a bit darker. But I'm using just a small amount and it's basically just tinting the surface. So it's not covering up the underpainting. You can see I, I didn't like the color I put on there so I used some kitchen tissue, wiped it off and that's the benefit of having that dry underpainting. Now because my paintings are all done with Alkid oil paints and I use the Winsor Newton brand but there's many many other ones just as good. That painting as I said dries enough for glazing by the next day. So you can see basically I'm just tinting the colour not covering up the, all those marks, all those small fur details. You can, get, you can get lots of depth this way and you can also easily get all those little fine color adjustments and color variations on there. It's very much like looking through a stained glass window. You're not really altering what's underneath but you are adjusting the colors. And I find I use this a lot towards obviously the end stages of a painting and I also use it quite a bit when I'm doing subjects such as tigers, especially if they're in a bright 
uh, sunlight because their oranges become very very vivid and it's not always easy to get colors such as that something else that would require a lot of glazing would be a subject such as a peacock where those super vibrant blues would be almost impossible to get from direct painting so you could even go to the stage of doing the underpainting in just grayscale and actually glazing the whole colors on top of it and done that way those colors would be much much more vibrant so let's take a look at another example here I'm using exactly the same technique just to add that glaze of color over the top. You can see how it makes it look much more three-dimensional as well. I'm generally glazing in the fur direction because if I do leave small marks, it's still gonna make sense if I was doing it in perhaps a horizontal direction on that bridge of the nose, you'd see possibly brush marks on there. So it's still important to do your glazing in the direction of the fur growth and how that fur is lying. Now questions I get asked sometimes are when I'm doing glazing do I have to glaze the whole canvas each session? No you don't have to glaze that at all and I almost never do that. I just glaze in areas where I need to perhaps uh, darken an area, colour an area and just make those slight adjustments as I'm doing now because sometimes on the edge you want to darken an area sometimes to give more of that three-dimensional look and that less of that cutout look so glazing is really good for that as well but no you don't have to then glaze the whole canvas now generally a glazed area may well when it's dry be slightly shinier than a non-glazed area and that's why you then it's another reason why you then varnish a painting at the end. I've got videos showing my um, preferred method of varnishing and that will balance all those uh, more matte areas where perhaps the colour have sunk in and perhaps glossier areas where you may have glazed. So it'll give it a, a nice even sheen over the whole canvas when it's actually varnished. On this final example taken from my eight hour um, Snow Leopard masterclass I'm using glazing in a different way I've made up kind of a semi-transparent almost opaque gray so I've then added to that paint just some glazing medium just to thin it a bit and make it slightly more transparent and I'm using it to kind of sculpt the shape of the snow leopard's head so where I need an area to be darker, you can see I'm scrubbing it in and the brush is quite dry. So it's not a sloppy mix. There's only a tiny amount of paint on the brush. There's only a, a small amount of medium in the paints. So I'm applying it very thinly, which would, you could also cause, call a dry brush technique. So it's kind of glazing, kind of dry brush. But I use this quite frequently to as I said, increase the darks in areas that's required. I don't do this really for highlights, it's mainly to darken areas. You can see I'm just using a very small amount of paint, but quickly you can really add a three-dimensional form to the subject, so the paint is dry underneath, just the same as I do with glazing. This is real time as you're seeing it. So you can see it's, it's a very fast technique you can still see through the paint quite easy so you can still see the under layer as well so that's another way of using it so as you can see glazing is nothing to be feared it's another tool to put in your box that you can use I find it very effective with wildlife art in particular because we get lots of these little color adjustments we want to do and lots of tonal adjustments as well glazing makes that much much easier it's not complicated for the supplies you need. As I said, I just use something like well, basically an alkyd medium, so either the M. Graham walnut medium or liquid. Just use small amounts with your paint. Don't use any other thinners when you're doing glazing, and you shouldn't go wrong. 
So hope, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again on the next tips video. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.